everyone. This is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, June 25th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. On today's show, we'll learn about an academy class on shrinking the government. And we'll pull up a chair at the card tables at the Resident Activities Center for a game of Samba. But first, we want to remind you that tomorrow, the Aviation Club meets in the Osprey Room of the Island. Lynn Freisner of Parkwood will be the guest speaker. He served as a military pilot and civilian test pilot for many years and will give an overview of aircraft flight testing and evaluation. He will also talk about his work at the Boeing Helicopter Company, from which Lynn retired as director of flight testing. The club meets at 1.15. Again, that's tomorrow in the Osprey Room. Well, it's time to get out those shopping shoes. Who knows, you might even be able to buy a new pair. Cord pickups begin Friday at 8.15 a.m. on the Shell Point Island for a trip to the Sanibel Island. It's a trip to Chico's at Periwinkle Place. The staff there will allow you to shop before the regular store hours for a relaxed experience with plenty of help. They will also hold a special resident raffle for a bracelet. There will be time for visiting other shops and lunch at the Blue Giraffe. The cost of the trip is $7 with lunch on your own. Also on Friday is an original one-woman musical presentation of This Old Hat, performed by Patty Carver, who portrays and brings to life four noted women of American history. This unique performance is sure to be entertaining and informational, too. Carver will portray Betsy Ross telling her story about the first American flag, Deborah Sampson, who tells of disguising herself as a man in order to fight in the Revolutionary War, Elizabeth Stanton, who speaks on the women's suffrage movement, and Amelia Earhart, reliving the story of her solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. The performance is at 2.30 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. And now it's time to talk politics. But wait, don't change the channel just yet. This isn't an election campaign, and we're not pining for votes. Many consider the problem with big government is that, well, it's big. Norton McKnight of Lucina wants to talk to you about shrinking it in his presentation called Shrinking Government Without Throwing Grandma or Anyone Else Off a Cliff. Well, that's quite an intriguing topic. Like the government, this presentation is so big it spans over two Thursdays, tomorrow and next Thursday. Terry Koloth spoke with McKnight recently about shrinking the government. Hi, I'm Terry Koloth. I'm here today with Norton McKnight of Lucina. We're here to talk about his upcoming classes in the Academy of Lifelong Learning, and they're about the Constitution. Thank you for joining me, Mr. McKnight. Thank you, Terry. I love that you brought this um, bumper sticker. I love the Constitution because I've learned so much about the Constitution from the classes that you have provided in the Academy. I just thank you so much. That bumper sticker comes from Hillsdale College because I take their courses and they're an excellent source for learning about the Constitution. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, let's talk about this course, Shrinking Government. Every year, for a while now, you've helped us get ready to celebrate our independence. And I ask you if you'll bring us something about our government that, that gets us thinking in the right direction. This year, you're going to talk about shrinking government. And I love how you started your description. Shrinking government is like the weather. Everyone talks about it, but no one does anything about it. It's a great way. Well, usually... The discussion about shrinking government boils down to shrinking the budget. The budget is not the problem. The budget is only the summation of the monetary cost of doing the things that the government does. The problem is the budget doesn't show what freedoms you lose by the government doing things. Oh. So if you're short of money, Next year, you just jack up taxes. But what do you do and where do you turn to when you lose some of your freedoms? The answer to that is, you've heard me say this before, when all else fails, read the instructions. 
the instructions for running our government is the Constitution. So that's what you do. You read the Constitution and you find out it protects all of your freedoms. And one of the things that we are worried about is the government encroachment on these freedoms. Mm -hmm. And it's desperately time when you hear what the NSA is doing, when you see what the IRS has done, sooner or later, somebody has to reestablish the constitutional government. Now, there is in the Constitution, which was written 235 years ago, the worry about government encroachment and what to do about it. The House of Representatives has the power and the obligation. It's not an option for them. The Constitution says what they shall do. And all they have to do is read the Constitution and follow it, and they will reestablish our freedoms. Fabulous. On part one, you're going to talk about the Tea Party and where it went wrong and established a process to shrink government without throwing grandma or anyone else off a cliff. And then in part two, you're going to broaden this to shrink the government with a revolutionary approach requiring all government agencies to operate according to the Constitution of the United States of America. That's a radical concept. <laughs> well, I, along with many other people, look forward to hearing how you interpret all this for us and share your years of knowledge and passion for the Constitution. Thank you, Mr. McKnight. Thank you, Jerry. I hope you join us because we have two Thursday afternoons, June 25th and July 2nd, to get our minds in the right framework for the 4th of July celebration of our country and the Constitution. On Monday afternoons at the Resident Activity Center on the island and Thursday mornings in the Sable Room of the Woodlands, a group of residents all sit together at tables to play a most interesting card game. Three packs of cards are used where the objective is to create a seven card sequence of the same suit, or Samba, which scores a bonus of 1,500 points. No meld, whatever that is, may contain more than two wild cards, and no wild card may, may be melded with a sequence. The game is 10,000 points, and the initial meld requirement for a side with 7,000 or more is 150. Got it? Well, anyway, the game is similar to Canasta, but don't ask me to explain that one either. In any case, there are plenty of residents who can attest to the fun to be had. It's a great way to make friends and keep your mind alert while having fun. Recently, we paid a visit during one of the games, and Dan Philgreen found out more about Samba. It's just after lunch on Monday here in the Resident Activity Center on the island, and that means it's time for Samba, the card game. And as you can see behind me, the group has assembled, and we're going to go find out a little bit about what this game is all about. So this is Gail Obi, and uh, I understand you kind of got this thing going, didn't you? I did. Um, I, we, my husband and I came from the villages of Country Creek in Estero, and we learned how to play the game there. And we were all playing hand and foot to start out with. And um, as soon as people got into Samba, that was the end of hand and foot. <laughs> and I <laughs> okay, think so I know it, the same has happened here. <laughs> it, I really don't know anything about cards, but I understand hand and foot is sort of the, where this, this is kind of that, except more so, right? Yes, this is, um, we like to think of this as hand and foot on steroids. Mm, okay. <laughs> So um, tell us a little bit. Now, it looks like you have a lot of cards going on here, more than, uh, you know, your standard poker game. We so. do. Um, this game involves, for four people, six decks of cards. Um, you need to um, keep track of so many different things in playing the game, which is takes a lot of concentration, but it's lots of fun. You have a partner to play with. Um, and you work with one another, and um, like she has four, four, three fours over there. Maybe I have a four in my rack I can put on to add. You have to have um, 
a number of things to go out. You have to have, this is a Samba, Ace, mm. King, Queen, Jack, 10, 9, 8, okay, in the suit, in one suit. There's four suits, so you can have four Sambas. And that's what we're building for because this is worth 2,000 points. Mm. And we want to, uh, the object of the game is to go out with the most points. Okay. So, so it sounds like there's a lot to this. Now, if somebody is just wanting to learn, how do they go about getting started? Well, uh, right now, Samba is being uh, played Mondays here at the rec center on the island, Thursday in the Sable Room at the Woodlands, Friday outside the organ at the Woodlands up on the second floor. Thursday is generally the teaching day, okay. so uh, we encourage anyone who wants to learn the game to come on Thursday, and I'll be the teacher uh, with other people's help on Thursday, And but certainly if you, uh, then once you learn the game, decide you like it, then you can pick whatever day you want to play. Okay. The one thing you absolutely have to have to play this game is the rack. Mm-hmm. This rack can be purchased at uh, either Benita Flea Market or the Fort Myers Flea Market. What are they? Two oh, for man. two for like six dollars. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really need the rack because at some point, if you see how many cards she has on her rack, you don't want to be holding them in your hands, especially if you have arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> so you really need the rack. Okay. Um, that's the only thing that you need to bring to the game. Shell Point provides the cards, the holders. Um, the you know, shuffler. The shuffler. The we, we use an automatic shuffler because so many cards to, mm -hmm. to keep track of. So um, I have two spare racks that I keep at the Woodlands that we use for teaching purposes. So we'd like to encourage anyone who wants to come, to come Thursday to learn the lesson. And I'd like to introduce Barbara Milligan. Barbara is the person in charge on Mondays. Well, we're growing over here. We, we have to add more tables every week. Okay. <laughs> well, Shell Point has lots of tables. That's right. So we're going to use them up. <laughs> okay. We have, uh, we try to start at 115 mm -hmm. so everybody can draw a card to find out which table they're going to be at. Okay. More cards have, involved. Yeah, you have different partners, see. You don't have uh, the same partners all okay. the time. Good way to meet people. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. And also, besides the Sambas, you do Canastas. Canastas? Or, or that sounds like another game. They are, they are either you call them peers so that you don't call them canastas, <laughs> but it's the same thing. In other words, you have to have seven cards of a suit. Okay. So. Well, you know, if you want to cheat and count cards, yeah. you better got to have a lot of memory banks, you right? You better have a lot of memory banks, <laughs> a lot of memory. <laughs> All right, Barbara. Thanks. So that's Monday with Barbara. I have I have another partner. He's he's Morty's at the other table, but with two of us, um, started Canasta. Ah, okay. And uh, the Canasta group was very strong. Uh huh. And then when Gail hit town with this samba, and we taught everybody by unanimous vote, everyone went from Canasta everybody to samba. It. Okay. So all you Canasta players, this is something you might like even better. Yeah. This yeah. is it, and we'll be glad to teach you even in our sessions. And I noticed that what we do is we put an inexperienced player with three experienced players, uh -huh. and they help. They Everyone helps each quick. other, mm -hmm. and we have men. we got men who like this game, and we encourage men to come here because it's a wonderful co-ed uh, game that you play and you're happy with, and the rules are very, very short, but enough that you can keep the game going. Okay. Sounds like this is a way to keep your mind sharp here. It you gotta, you gotta use the old noodle, huh? And this is Shirley. She's one of our best players. Okay, Shirley. So tell us, how come you like this game so much? It's just a fun game. Different. Every game is absolutely different. Okay. Yeah. Great. We have luncheons. Ah. And food. Um, There's food involved. Did you hear that? So we try very hard to uh, either go to the Palm Grill or go to a restaurant. The whole group. You know, yeah, you might talk like me into go. playing if there's food involved. So we like the idea of the social aspect of the group. Well, there you have it, folks. A great game. Keep your mind sharp. There's food involved. You can meet new folks. And you know what? They'll help you learn. It's not scary. 
they'll get you started and you can have a great time with the game of Samba, the card game. Tell us about the secret of, of the Samba game is... You don't have to dance. No dancing involved. And now it's time for all the latest happenings, Academy news, menus, and Village Church connections. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm going to tell you what we have for activities here at Shell Point today. We're going to start with the men's Bible study in the Osprey Room at 745. And at 845, Lily and Company Jewelers will be at the Resident Activity Center for a weekly jewelry service. From 9 till noon, you'll find Jirasi Travel in the Egret Room, and they'll be here to help you with your personal travel needs. Also at 9 o'clock, we have the Men's Round Robin Doubles Tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton will be in the Art Studio at 9 o'clock. And at 9.15, we have the Card Making and Scrapbooking Group down in the Tarpon Room. The Ladies' Bible Study will be in the Osprey Room at 10 o'clock. And at 10.15, we have Health Connections class, Veggies and Healing Properties. That's at the Social Center. The Model Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Woodlands Commons Lake at 10.15. And at 11.30, we have a Health Connections, Agility and Flexibility. That's in the Health Club. That's currently full. We're going to move on into the afternoon now, at where you'll find chess being played in the Library Lounge at 1 o'clock. 1.15, the Hearing Enrichment Group will be in the Manatee Room on the island. Do You Know Your Neighbor? Italy with the subject will be in the Social Center. That's at 2.15. The Bible Study will be in the King's Crown Community Room at 3 o'clock. And we also have a 3 o'clock Health Connections class, Pilates Stretch. That's in the Health Club. At 4.30, Indoor Bocce will be in the Health Club. And then at 5 o'clock, we have the singles table at the Crystal Dining Room available if you're interested. At 5.45, the church choir rehearsal will be at the Village Church. And at 7.15, we conclude our activities with prayer and praise at the Village Church. Well, it's nice to see you here today, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Wednesday. At 10 o'clock, Legacy Seminar 2, Estate Planning Fundamentals for Florida Residents, will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. Sign up is required. At 1.15, our Computer Basics on Mac Laptops class continues in the Technology Teaching Center on the island. And at 3 o'clock, our Word Processing Prep School continues in the Resident Computer Center at the Woodlands. Tomorrow, we have a new class with Mary Richard of Sand Dollar. This is AARP Smart Driver course for those who have signed up. And also an Academy on the Go number four to the Cape Coral History Museum for those who have signed up. And Norton McKnight of Lucina will teach shrinking government. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is roast beef with garlic mashed potatoes and sautéed mushrooms. And the soup of the day is pasta fagioli. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a turkey cob salad wrap with chips for $7.75. The dinner special is fried shrimp for $8.75. Dinner specials in the palm grill are braised lamb shanks for $16.95 or shrimp with pesto cream over linguine for $15.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church. And you know, one of my favorite comedians when I was growing up was Bill Cosby. I remember having a 33 RPM album, which I listened to over and over again. I had his routines almost memorized. And the title of the album that I had was, Why Is There Air? On one of the episodes he describes involves the time he went to college. He attended Temple University as a physical education major. And then, of course, as only Bill Cosby could spin it, the story gets, um, well, embellished. He tells about dating a brilliant young woman who was a philosophy major, and she would go around verbalizing deep philosophical thoughts and would say things like, why is there air? To which Bill Cosby would reply, well, every phys ed major knows why there's air. There's air to blow up volleyballs, air to blow up basketballs. You know, we do kind of take air for granted, don't we? We are surrounded by it. We inhale it. 
We live because of it, but we rarely think about it. They say fish are not aware that they're wet, so accustomed they become to their environment. It's only when they're taken out of the water that they become aware of water because of its absence, and we're the same way with air. We take it for granted unless we're deprived of it. You know, the LifeQuest program here at Shell Point identifies six dimensions which encourages personal and community well-being. They include the natural environment, the physical, the emotional, the educational, the social and community, and there's the spiritual. And the Village Church is invested, as you might imagine, in the spiritual for obvious reasons. However, I like to think of the spiritual dimension as air. And I like to think of the other five dimensions as the parts of an automobile tire. Without air in the tire, the parts of the tire are damaged and eventually will be destroyed as the car is driven. Without the spiritual dimension, the other aspects of our lives lose their purpose and meaning, even their function. We live in an age in which we take for granted the air in our tires. I'm sure you remember the days when automobile tires weren't so reliable. If you were to take a road trip back in those days, it would not have been surprising to have a flat tire. They were not all that uncommon. Today, however, we hardly ever even think about the air in our tires, and blowouts are fairly rare. We do, however, still depend on the air in our tires, and if we experienced a blowout, the results might be catastrophic, especially if we were driving 70 miles an hour on an interstate. We human beings are spiritual beings. That is the way we have been made. And yet so often we take for granted that, that dimension of our lives. Our spirits are the air in our tires. Without a vibrant spiritual life, the other dimensions of life become problematic. You know, one of the things I learned as a university professor was that professors were always trying to develop models as metaphors to explain various kinds of phenomena. That's the case in nearly every field, especially in the social sciences. It's as if one professor wants to say, well, reality is like this, and then he or she would describe a model. And another professor would come along and say, no, 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 reality is more like this, and then he or she would describe reality using a different kind of model for their metaphor. And that's how a lot of university professors spend a lot of their time debating and arguing about models and metaphors. And so here I go presenting a model, a metaphor for describing a dimension of reality, the spiritual dimension as air in a tire. But you know that model or that metaphor from a biblical perspective is not all that far-fetched. The idea of the spiritual as air is not something I conjured up on my own. I just didn't make it up out of, uh, well, you know, out of thin air. The Bible uses two words for spirit. And those words are both used to describe the human spirit as well as the spirit of God. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is ruach, and the word literally means breath or wind. In the New Testament, the Greek word is pneuma, and guess what? That word literally means breath or wind, just like the Hebrew word. So the idea of the spiritual as air is not original with me. It is a thoroughly biblical concept. And by the way, the Greek word for spirit, pneuma, is the word from which we get our word pneumatic. And pneumatic refers to anything in which air or another gas is used under pressure in a mechanical tool or object. In fact, back in the early days of the automobile, we used to call the wheels pneumatic tires because they were filled with air. So the spiritual dimension can be understood well by the concept of air. Even air, which supports and enables the other dimensions of life, like the natural environment, the physical, the emotional, the educational, the community, and the social. Like air in our tires, we do tend to take the spiritual for granted. But maybe that's not the best thing to do. Maybe we ought to become more aware of the spiritual dimension. Maybe we ought to think about it consciously. And maybe, after all, it wouldn't be such a bad idea to ask, why is there air? I hope that we see you soon in the Village Church or around campus. Blessings to each and every one of you. Well, that wraps things up for today's show. Be sure to watch again tomorrow when resident Dee Horn will talk about the summer concert series with the River City Brass Ensemble coming next month. And Project Development Director Bob Southern will give us a personal tour of the new community building and pool at the estuary. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, June 24th. 
I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. And as always, we'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.